So hello everyone, I'm Chris and I'll try to amuse you today with uh, uh, solving problems you probably never even think of uh, that you have them. So what is testing? Uh, maybe you know the Beyond Zero. Uh, if you like, uh, if you like it, then you should have put a test on it. Uh, <coughs> means that if you care about your code, you should test it. Otherwise, if someone will change it and you didn't test it, well, it's not, not their problem. What about test-driven development? Uh, it's, uh, it's just a, a practice developed by um, Kent Beck and Extreme Programming, where you lie uh, when you do the test before uh, the implementation. In the test-driven development, we're using unit tests, and that's the mantra, red, green, refactor. So we started the red test of the uh, test, which is red after that, we try to make the simplest implementation to make it pass and after the refactor, which means that we remove the duplicates. What about behavior driven development? It's just based on TDD. It's adding a bit more to it, mainly naming and the approach. We don't use usually unit tests for that because it's harder to express your behavior with the unit tests we use integration or functional tests. So who is writing tests before the code? Yeah, half the audience. Nice. So, what about the mocking? Uh, so, uh, in order to test, we have to uh, fake the behavior, and we have mocks, stabs, fakes. I won't go into details about that. Just in order to make the mock, uh, you can do, um, you can use Google Mock or make any other stuff. Uh, basically, I will be talking here uh, about the interfaces, but you can do mocking or. Uh, injecting dependencies via mm, type erasure, policy-based design, or anything else. So what about DI? DI is, uh, as the Hollywood principle says, don't call us, we'll call you. So it means that instead of creating your own objects, we pass them this way. We have a loosely coupled code, which we don't have to <coughs> uh, uh, really care about in a sense that we don't have to maintain it. It's all about the constructions. So uh, how, how we can actually achieve, how, how DI is related to testing in general. Uh, that's the problem I'm trying to show, uh, show you. So let's implement automatic mock injector. So the goal, we have our interface, we create a test we have uh, given one then and verify the expectations. So that's our goal. We would like to have the mock provider and don't care about how, how to inject or how to create the mocks. So how can we do that? Uh, well, we will use Fakey. There's a library for um, uh, creating mocks. Uh, it's like Google Mock, just we don't have to write the, the amazing macros. So uh, it's not standard, it, it, it depends on the Vtable layout, it will never be in the standard, but it works. So hello world, we just have a mock, we can add the expectations on it and, and verify them later on. Uh, Boost DI, it's proposed library written by me, uh, doesn't really matter, hello world. Uh, so instead of injecting directly to the hello world, uh, objects which we created, we just uh, defined them uh, via the uh, injector and after that uh, uh, DI will uh, inject them for us. We don't have to care about the order of uh, constructor arguments or um, the types, so dynamic shared pointer, references, pointers, whatever, DI will take care of that. So it's quite handy for testing. Yeah, DI is faster than Java, awesome. So uh, what about what about mocks provider? So that's the way we can do it. So in the DI, uh, we have the provider method, which is get, uh, where we create objects. So in, in, instead of, uh, in, in case of uh, polymorphic types, which is our mocks, as I said, we'll use interfaces here. And when the type is not bound, meaning that we didn't specify that this type should be a specific, this interface should be a specific type, we can just return the mock, which will be created automatically for us. Otherwise, we'll just uh, create an object. Okay, TDD. So let's put coffee to the test. 
So how we can do that? So we create the coffee, we brew, and then we verify the object. That's all the stuff we have to do. We don't really have to create any mocks or anything like that. As I said, if it comes to constructor, we just write it as usual, the AI will just care, take care of anything. So if we refactor it afterwards, doesn't really matter, no changes in the test. Mocks, as I said, we just fake it, it will be done for us. BDD, uh, the same case, we have some March game. As I said, it's a bit different if, they, if it comes to naming, so we put a scenario instead of just, I should do that, so we say, given when then, when we have one move, and there's a match, that there should be no move, how that will look like. So that's our test. We bind uh, some stuff. As you notice here, we don't bind any mocks because they will be injected automatically via the mocks injector. We just create the game. After that, we have the first uh, case when we start the game. We verify that uh, the mock for the canvas is, is showing the board with the moves. And after that, we swipe, a swipe, and after that, we see that the game is updated. So what, what DI is actually solving here, it's solving the wiring mess. So on the left side, you can see with the manual DI, you would have to put a lot of uh, boilerplate code in order to make it happen. The same stuff would have to be written in the production code, DI. Well, we don't really have to put much. What about if you do simple refactor? So for example, board constructor will be changed uh, to a different one when we have to uh, refactor it on the manual DI, on the DI we don't have to. So to sum up, less work is better than more work. Avoid tedious code and polyprate code. Thank you.